we are at it yet again in the Hunter Call of the Wild, going for a hunt featuring the 243 handgun. Although last time, we featured it as a hole within the loadout. Today we're trying to feature it on its own. We were able to, in the early access portion of the handgun DLC, take a diamond whitetail with the Glock, and then on Monday's livestream, we managed to take a diamond access tier with the 45, so that leaves us with only the 243 pistol in the game as a weapon we haven't taken a diamond with, and that is the hope today out here on Quattro Colinas to accomplish that goal. And as I was trying to determine which map to go to for this, I realized that Quattro is actually perfect. The only species on the entire map that we cannot ethically take with the 243 is the European hares, which we're probably not too likely to find a diamond of anyway, but everything from boar to mouflon to ibex and even red deer can be taken ethically with this gun. So hopefully between all those species and what I would say is a fairly high likelihood of finding diamonds on this particular map, we can get this done and get all three of the new handguns crossed off. And in the meantime, we'll probably pretty much be exclusively using this gun today for the entire hunt. There have no doubt been new weapons that we've tried to get a diamond of, but gone for a hunt mostly using other things because it's maybe not the best gun for certain species, but in this case, it can do everything we need it to do. And this right here is one of those things. Going back to the live stream I mentioned where we shot the diamond axis here with the 45, we were actually able to hit a 400 meter shot on a red deer with this 243 pistol. Now, I talked about wanting to get a diamond from over 400 meters with it. I don't think that's gonna be what we do today. It depends what happens. If we would find a level nine red deer, the size of the lungs with them, I think that we could probably do, but if it is one of these smaller species, most likely we'll try to go for more of a sure shot just to make sure we get a diamond with this gun too. And really, I do consider like even 250 meters a pretty sure shot. You can see, didn't aim high, kind of top of the lungs and into the stomach there, 50 meter beyond the zero range. And we've talked about that plenty with this gun. Where was that hiding? Let's maybe look at the potential for its accuracy. Can we make a back of the neck shot on a highballed Rodeer Doe? We most certainly can. It's not a diamond, so we're not going to, you know, change plans here, but there's our first cool kill. Well, I guess kind of our second cool kill with this gun. We also had the egg white wolf over on Yukon Valley, but that's pretty neat. I really, I mean, these are its tracks. It must have been in the field when we shot the buck. I never saw it, maybe it was on screen there, but I think 187 meters, something like that. No hesitation, no problem. We actually brain shot it, 174 meters, but there's really no risk in doing that when it comes to a doe. You'd have the nun metal no matter what, so we can technically mess it up, and, oh, technically, it's not technically messed up. I guess there are no trophy organs, so it makes sense. I didn't know they did that though. I thought does would still have the trophy organ check even though they had no antlers or horns. That's actually pretty neat. I don't know if that's always been a thing, but cool little bonus kill as we go along. Good start out here on Quattro. You know, I'm kind of just thinking back to our red deer grind and how often we would come to this particular lake. And I feel like it was still one of the main places we went, but even after the reset and redistribution, I don't remember there being this many stags. I don't know, maybe there was another one after that, but I don't recall that happening. So I do kind of find it interesting there are so many, but 330-ish meters, probably right about at the spine should be good. The level of drop on this handgun is not much. Now, when you do use something like a 243 on a red deer, a class six animal that is probably a bit big for the caliber, you can't really know if you made a good shot and need a follow up or not because they're going to run so far before you get to see what the impact was it's probably going to be too far away to actually get a follow-up. This one at about 260 though, we can pretty well aim dead on and that should be a long hit as well. Maybe that wasn't actually 330, I thought it was. According to the hunting pressure, one down already, so I think we got them both. Now, it definitely does require a good bit more tracking, and even in this case he was starting to come back, but still enough to bring him down right long at 318. And it's, I mean, it's still high in the lung. There's plenty of room for drop there. At 400, the one that we shot on stream that was, I think, at 401, I believe we aimed right up in here, and it was still center-ish of the lungs. 
for that. It really is impressive what that handgun can do. And then, actually, this is the other side. When you get a single lung shot with a kind of lower caliber weapon, sometimes they kind of make it most of the way back to where you shot them. By the time you get over there at 250 meters, we hit darn near exactly where we aimed, another gold at 191. But I believe that marker is just about where he was, only 50 meters away. Now, he ran much farther, all the way out, and then started to walk back. And it can work that way. It can actually save you tracking at times, but probably overall, I would still say you want to use a caliber with more power when you're trying to grind or do anything like that. A casual hunt like this, though, a little bit of extra tracking. I don't mind it, especially when we get to use such a cool weapon. Maybe getting a little closer, though, to finding a diamond to take with the 243. Definitely our best animal thus far. Still a level 7 red deer, but the bigger rack for them. And that's a tough-ish angle. I want to see how the 243 can do. Going to attempt to kind of line that up at the heart. I think we were too high anyway. But I just want to see that kind of quartering angle, how it does into the lungs. Because I think it'll get there. But I'm just curious to look at the bullet path. I would say the first thing is he went down faster than... Well, I guess it was way closer than what we shot at 300. But definitely brought him down more quickly. According to this, though... I mean, it's well into the lung. It would have started to hit the lung maybe back into here somewhere and went pretty far through. So I don't think it's a matter of needing to ever make sure that you're at an ideal angle. The 243 is plenty for a red deer. 210 score, though. And I think it is probably getting through red deer drink time pretty well. It's 830 now. I'm thinking we may rest forward to Ibex time soon. And as we move into Ibex drink time, we may, at the very least, have a Hall of Shame candidate here, a 44 to 55 score level 1 Ibex. However, it is just on a mission to walk away, so first, we need to alert it, and then hopefully with a relatively quick shot, perhaps after reloading, since we shot the Red Deer, we can get him down before he turns, so shouldn't need to aim all that high. That should have dipped into a lung, I think. I don't even know exactly what the range is, but he's going down, so I would assume that got into a lung. I'm really hoping either Southeastern or Spanish Ibex or one of the other Ibex species can be our diamond for today with the 243. But we'll see what we run into as we start to look for them. And it almost has to be a lung shot, medium bleed rate, so not a bad deal. Right lung and shoulders are kind of high in there, but 290 meters away, 49 score, man. It is 0 0.02 from being a bronze. Is that minimum weight, though? It may be. I think we'll tax him anyway. I really wish it would have been a bronze. That's normally, like, the deciding factor for what we put in the Hall of Shame. Now, that one gives us a chance anyway. That is kind of the thing about the Southeastern Spanish Ibex. You can get diamond level 4s even below the max weight estimate. 74 to 87 kg is their maximum estimate. This guy at 61 to 74 has a pretty favorable score estimate. Diamond, I think, is 89 and change. 84 to 95 is solid. And really, it comes down to the tip to tip spread. And when he's facing away from us, doesn't look that bad. So we'll go from here about 300 meters away. Probably going to go ahead and at least try to get a steady rest. And I'm thinking as long as he'll stop, probably like top of the shoulder ish should be about where we want to aim just need him to relax and slow down. Now, I have found that you don't have to get a big lead. With this pistol, I don't feel like it's any slower firing than the rifle, but at that range, I'd prefer to only have to worry about one variable. And right in there, apparently, is going to be the spot, so I'll try to put that kind of like right at the back of the shoulder, and hopefully he'll start to go down relatively quickly, and it looks like he is, so maybe a shot anyway. At our first diamond with the 243, again, it's a level 4 Southeastern Spanish Ibex. Not the most impressive thing, but it is what was out here. Now, the bleed rate this time is low, but I imagine that's mostly just due to the distance. And like I said, a decent-ish tip-to-tip spread. We'll see he could cross that 89 marker. 87.55, so close. 89.68 is the diamond requirement, and quite frankly, of all the things that I would kind of hope doesn't make diamond, probably a below max weight estimate level 4 at Southeastern Spanish Ibex is pretty high on that list, so no complaints there, at least a decent one, and we'll continue hopping around to some of the other spots. 
it has been pretty cool as well to see some of the new spots that Ibex drink. This was a lake that we did a lot of red deer grinding, always has been good for gray wolves, but seeing Bathidi's Ibex drink up here is definitely a little bit new. Now, none are very big. A couple of solid fours, but nowhere near level five. And I think just for the heck of it, was the one up to 177 the best one? I guess it must have been. At 275 meters, we'll go ahead and try to take him. And unfortunately, it looks like we will be waiting another day to try to get a diamond with the 243, which as much praise as this gun has gotten and as much as we've used it, it is interesting it ended up being the one that we have yet to take a diamond with. On the bright side though, we did have a piebald road here, and we also did have a Hall of Shame Ibex, so we can head back and take a look at those. We'll probably actually put them in the same lodge for now. And I do have to say, on a plaque of that size, that Ibex is a little less than impressive. I wish it would have been a bronze. It's amazing how close we got, but didn't quite get below the silver marker. And we've been putting rare female animals in the Hall of Shame Lodge for forever, just because it's kind of the only place to put them outside of multi-mounts. And I figured this little full body platform for the piebald road here would be nice. I don't know if we have a female piebald anywhere in the lodges. I'm sure we've shot them. I just maybe either never placed them or didn't tax them. But that's a nice little thing to take with the 243 as we wait for that opportunity to get a diamond with it. But it's good to kind of spread out on other maps. We've been obviously on Silver Ridge Peaks and Riven Tule Coast a lot. And even though we didn't get a diamond, a nice little rare is always a cool bonus as we go along on these other maps. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time.